Hi, so today I want to test if this bad boy works as photo initiator and I have a study that I want to reproduce and just see if I get some polymer or if I don't. My monomer will be methyl metacrylate and I will use this product which is dentacryl. It is available for general public so that's pretty good. It contains some other chemicals as well. So this is safety data sheet and it contains methyl metacrylate of course and other esters and dimethyl toluidine and there's quite a lot of it and other component uh, is hydroquinone which is used as polymerization inhibitor so this thing doesn't suddenly boil and explode even though methyl metacrylate is pretty safe but is at it anyway so first thing I want to get rid of the hydroquinone so I will add some sodium hydroxide looks like 8 grams and about 50 ml of water and I will add some stir bar yeah let's go like 50 ml around looks like 60 Ok, now that hydroxide is dissolved, I will add the metal, metal metacrylate. And stir like there's no tomorrow. Well, the lower face is pretty dark. There's not a lot of data on toluidine, but I figured it has nitrogen, so I cannot probably acid and make salt with water. And it seems to work. So I will add hydrochloric acid, about a lot of it. I could probably calculate and stuff, but don't have time right now, so... Yeah, and sir, of course. Uh... Okay, that's good enough. Now the lower fraction should be our water layer or aqueous layer, yeah. So let's transfer metacrylate to this beaker. As you can see there's a bunch of water. For fuck's sake. Where was I? Yeah, so there's a bunch of water and you have to remove it. And I will use, what is it, sodium calcium sulfate. So let's add a really generous amount.
to suck that water up. This calcium sulfate is probably not driest. I could probably heat it up a little bit. Okay, and finally filter this metacrylate. Yeah, I should sometimes this calcium sulfate can go through filters so I may have to make sure that the pressure is low enough initial in the initial stage and then I can ramp it up. Right, so as I mentioned, this metacrylate is now yellow because there's some um, fuck, there's some contamination from the desiccant. Okay, so let's get to the fun part. Here are the results of the experiments from the paper that I want to reproduce, and I guess here is described the best case, and they also told that this is probably well not the best case, but that it is most consistent. Also, if I understand this correctly, they are using numbers multiplied by 10 to the power of 4, right? So, by 10,000. Because then it is... then they are using 2.1 grams per liter in moles per liter of benzyl and 0 0.5 grams per liter of triethylamine. And these are not pretty great concentrations, I could probably drink this and it wouldn't kill me, even though the headache from one liter of methyl metacrylate would be probably awful. So otherwise it would be 21 grams per liter and that starts to get a little bit... Okay, I can try, I can try multiply the concentration by 10 because to get 0 0.5 grams per liter I cannot really measure this unless I want to make one liter of the solution and I really don't. So here I want to do 100 grams of solution so to do this I can use 2.1 grams of benzyl, 0 0.5 grams of triethylamine and around this number of methyl metacrylate so this would result in about 100 milliliters or 100 grams. Metal metacrylate is, has almost the same density as water. It's a little bit lighter. Benzyl is a little bit denser. Triethylamine is very light, but doesn't matter that much. Uh, we won't deviate too much from these numbers. So then I can take one gram from this solution and another 9 grams of methyl metacrylate and this should give me concentrations that are described here if my math is correct. Yeah, let's roll with this. Also, maybe I should say that previously I have tried just just throwing in some benzyl and pipetting in some triethylamine and it didn't work at all, so let's see if it does this time. Yeah, and also I should probably describe how am I going to check if I get some polymerization going or not. Let's do it right now. So let me demonstrate this with benzoyl peroxide that does work reliably. So I will pour in about one milliliter of metal metacrylate. And here I have benzoyl peroxide, and I will use just the tiniest amount. Well, not the tiniest amount, but very, very small. As you can see, there are just a few little crystals there. So here it goes. Ah, 
hope that was out of focus. I did not notice. Anyway, here's a firework for you. <laughs> uh, let me tell you, recrystallizing that benzyl peroxide was absolute wonderful. There was fireworks everywhere, or literally, randomly. Okay, so let's lower this on the hot plate. Now this will quickly start to boil and I will leave it like that for about 2 minutes. Yep, I expected that. Okay, so this is probably more than enough. I will cool this a little bit. So into this beaker I will pour a little bit of isopropanol because I have mixed my alcohol with acetone and I cannot really re recognize them because I am probably overwhelmed with methyl metacrylate smells. So as you can see here is liquid. You cannot really tell whether there is some polymer or not. So when you mix this, the polymer will precipitate out. Okay, so let's start preparing our concentrate. I think it would be wise to start with benzyl and triethylamine. Okay, so let me get my reference paper and let's see. 2.1 grams of benzyl. Okay, and 0 0.5 grams of triethylamine. Of course, I was able to buy only one liter as minimum amount. And I need 0 0.5 for my super concentrate that I can use probably for the end of my lifetime. Anyway, Oops, uh, good enough. And now about 97 grams of methyl metacrylate. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, so this is our concentrate. Now let's prepare our polymer resin. For that I will need about 9 milliliters of methyl metacrylate yep good enough and one gram of our concentrate Let's mix this and finally transfer about, I don't know, 2 milliliters of this resin. Resin. Not sure how, how should I call this even. And 
that's too right let's do four or three Free, because why not? Anyway, and here is the thing. So I bought this ballast for arc lamps, and it works pretty good. And here is my very sketchy setup. With uh, this is metal halide, high pressure, some studio light. Not quite sure. I can probably link you link you specifications, even though there wasn't any light spectrum uh, or light emission or anything really about this thing. Its only color temperature is pretty high, so I think there will be some UV. And in fact, I can be absolutely sure that there is some UV. It is 400 watts. In the paper, they say they use 125 watt high pressure mercury lamp also they did they did this experiment in uh, borosilicate glass anyway so i will try to get some specifications from the lamp they used in the paper if i can if i can't you have to take my word for it or they were their word for it that it's high pressure mercury vapor lamp and with the spectrum that usually these lamps produce let's set up this thing and let's do the thing basically, right? Okay, so here's the lamp that you can't see really, and I will move this about two centimeters from the lamp. That's probably good, and I'll try to go a little bit under it. And that's because the fan will blow air and this portion should be cooled. This will be as well, a little bit. Um, smart thing to do would be probably to have temperature monitoring of the, of the liquid. But I can't be really bothered right now to do that. And I'm not quite sure if the light output is 400 watts really, because it's set to 400 watts, but it doesn't look like 400 really to me. I will turn this on in a little bit, and you can see for yourself. Okay, so I'm pretty much ready. By the way, it's about 15 degrees Celsius here, so it should be cooled well enough. And it shouldn't boil too much, and... And I'm not sure if I really believe this will work. Let me tell you that. If, if it does, I expect it to be quite poor in performance, so... So, here goes nothing. Yeah, it's not plugged in. Fuck. Okay, so once again, here goes nothing. Right, so this is about 30 minutes later, or still about. I sat down inside and with some guy prospecting for gold. I think I can really do it whole day, no problem. Okay, how does this look? It's very liquidy. Not very warm, so I think I will adjust it a little bit. Okay, so this is the end of the day. Um, quite tired already 
Oh. Oh. Would you look at that? A fucking amazing. I did not expect that. For sure. Even though. Yeah, this is not warm at all. So this wasn't polymerized due to the heat. And in fact... It's still... Yeah, it's polymerized from one side, so... This is definitely because of light. I could do another, another experiment. But... Okay. That's pretty cool. So I got this thing that was placed about here. Which is pretty far away from the ball. I can use sunlight to check what happens with this. But in any case, let's put some isopropanol here and see what happens. Probably nothing, but you never know. Yeah, there's pretty much nothing. Okay, that's fine. If I drop this here, it would probably. Do something, yep. There are some solids, of course, out of focus. And I'm not quite satisfied with just looking at this right as you can see there are quite distinct layers for example this is very clear and looks much more solid this part is liquid and it is quite lot quite yellowed and oh boy It is really solid. Now, here's the question. I had to wait like an hour and a half for this to complete. I mean, I, I guess, I'm not sure. I did not check only at like half an hour and one and a half hour or something like that. I'm not, I'm not sure, I don't remember, I'm, I'm tired. Anyway, so question is, if I decrease or if I increase the concentration or if I don't dilute the solution that I prepared for dilution, what happens? Will it be faster? Will it be slower? So that's a good question and I'm unfortunately not able to answer it this time, but I definitely want to know. So I am definitely happy with this outcome. Again, I will absolutely run this with cooling next time and I will probably not document it unless I will find something extraordinary and I will absolutely definitely update the description uh, whether this worked or not.